Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. We are learning clock related concepts and we have already visited few basic concepts of CTS and in this lecture let us start understanding about CTS algorithm that tool will use. There are different CTS algorithms which are useful on a case to case basis and few of them we have already seen. Here is an example to show you construction of RC based CTS. In this tree, all the endpoints will get direct connection from the clock source like this. This method of clocking is not used anymore. It was used in earlier age designs where skew limits were relaxed and number of endpoints were also very less. Nowadays, lot more complex structures are used. Even though we have seen edge bridge previously, here is one more detailed example of a three level edge bridge that tool uses for constructing of CTS. Number of levels in edge bridge depends on standard cell count, placement and floor planning. With increasing levels, complexity in tree will also increase. Now the question is how the tool will build such a complex tree. The answer is tool will first create a tree at a top level first like this. This is the first level. Then at the second level, it will further try to go deeper to reach the coverage almost all places of the standard cell area. And after that, in each hierarchy, it will further build the tree like this and then what will happen is it will further draw this edge bridge to the leaf level clock pins of the flip flop and similar methodology it will replicate in the other branches of the edge bridge and same thing it will again replicate in the entire area and it will buffer that bridge like this so it will spread it in the entire core like this that way almost similar loads will be present everywhere and buffers are needed for improving the transition. This method is most commonly used for building the clock tree. We all know a symbol of pi. It has two legs under the bar and this pi configuration of CTS tool will also try to create a symmetrical structure like pi shape. So let's take an example. It will take the clock source and from there on it will try to divide the sub branch into two equal halves like this and it will keep buffering until it reaches the end point clock pin. So you can see that it is coming in the shape of pi and every flop will have a pi structure from the clock source. This is just another method of implementation of clock tree. But this method is also not used very frequently because it might not be very efficient when you have a large number of standard cell instances in the design. At that time, it becomes very difficult to implement a structure like this. If you have a design in which the shape of the partition is in a rectangular shape and your length is very very greater than your width, at that time you will have a rectangular pipe like structure in, that could be like this. So in this case, what you will do is you will connect all the flip flops uh, clock pins of each other and it will keep on connecting and then you will have a big trunk running across the design like this and in this case we will call this type of clock structure as a fishbone structure. Fishbone structures are generally used in a long rectangular form because in that case implementing a edge tree is actually difficult and fishbone structure is comparatively easy and efficient. If you have seen all previous floor plan and placement related videos and then you are coming to see this video on clock tree synthesis algorithms then it is indeed a big achievement that you have already seen 50 videos of this series so far. It indicates your hunger to learn about physical design. Today we have seen implementation of all these algorithms and we understood which algorithm to be used in which case. That is all for this video. We will come up with more concepts in further videos. Till then, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.